Exodus 19. Exactly three months after the Israelites had left Egypt, they reached the desert of Sinai. They had left Rephidim and had come to the desert of Sinai. The Israelites camped in the desert in front of Mount Sinai. Then Moses went up on the mountain to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain. The Lord said, Say this to the family of Jacob, and tell this to the people of Israel. Every one of you has seen what I did to the people of Egypt. You saw how I carried you out of Egypt. I did it as an eagle carries her young on her wings, and I brought you here to me. So now obey me and keep my agreement. Do this and you will be my own possession, chosen from all nations. Even though the whole earth is mine, you will be my kingdom of priests. You will be a nation that belongs to me alone. You must tell the Israelites these words. So Moses went down and called the elders of the people together. He told them all the words the Lord had commanded him to say. And all the people answered together, We will do everything he has said. Then Moses took their answer back to the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, I will come to you in a thick cloud. I will speak to you. The people will hear me talking to you. I will do this so the people will always trust you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. The Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and have them spend today and tomorrow preparing themselves. They must wash their clothes and be ready by the day after tomorrow. On that day, I, the Lord, will come down on Mount Sinai. And all the people will see me. But you must set a limit around the mountain. The people are not to cross it. Tell the people not to go up on the mountain. Tell them not to touch the foot of it. Anyone who touches the mountain must be put to death. He must be put to death with stones or shot with arrows. No one is allowed to touch him. Whether it is a person or an animal, he will not live. But the trumpet will make a long blast. Only then may the people go up on the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people. He made them prepare themselves for service to God. And the people washed their clothes. Then Moses said to the people, Be ready in three days. Do not have physical relations during this time. It was the morning of the third day. There was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud on the mountain, and there was a very loud blast from a trumpet. All the people in the camp were frightened. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God. They stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke. This happened because the Lord came down on it in fire. The smoke rose from the mountain like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain shook wildly. The sound from the trumpet became louder. Then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. So the Lord came down on the top of Mount Sinai. Then he called Moses to come up to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up. The Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people. They must not force their way through to see me. If they do, many of them will die. Even the priests who may come near me must first prepare themselves. If they don't, I, the Lord, will punish them. Moses told the Lord, The people cannot come up Mount Sinai. You yourself told us to set a limit around the mountain. We made it holy. The Lord said to him, Go down and bring Aaron with you. But don't allow the priests or the people to force their way through. They must not come up to the Lord. If they do, I will punish them. So Moses went down to the people and told them these things. Luke 22 It was almost time for the Jewish feast of unleavened bread, called the Passover feast. The leading priests and teachers of the law were trying to find a way to kill Jesus, but they were afraid of the people. One of Jesus' twelve apostles was named Judas Iscariot. Satan entered Judas, and he went to the leading priests and some of the soldiers who guarded the temple. 
He talked to them about a way to give Jesus to them. They were pleased and promised to give Judas money. Judas agreed. Then he waited for the best time to turn Jesus over to them without the crowd knowing it. The day of unleavened bread came. This was the day the Passover lambs had to be sacrificed. Jesus said to Peter and John, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us to eat. They asked, Where do you want us to prepare it? Jesus said to them, Listen, after you go into the city, you will see a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. Tell the person who owns that house. The teacher asks that you please show us the room where he and his followers may eat the Passover meal. Then he will show you a large room upstairs. This room is ready for you. Prepare the Passover meal there. So Peter and John left. Everything happened as Jesus had said. So they prepared the Passover meal. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles were sitting at the table. He said to them, I wanted very much to eat this Passover meal with you before I die. I will never eat another Passover meal until it is given its true meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup. He gave thanks to God for it and said, Take this cup and give it to everyone here. I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until God's kingdom comes. Then Jesus took some bread. He thanked God for it, broke it, and gave it to the apostles. Then Jesus said, This bread is my body that I'm giving for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup shows the new agreement that God makes with his people. This new agreement begins with my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus said, One of you will turn against me. His hand is by my hand on the table. The Son of Man will do what God has planned, but how terrible it will be for that man who gives the Son of Man to be killed. Then the apostles asked each other, Which one of us would do that to Jesus? Then the apostles began to argue about which one of them was the most important. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the world rule over their people. Men who have authority over others are called very important. But you must not be like that. The greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the leader should be like the servant. Who is more important, the one sitting at the table or the one serving him? You think the one at the table is more important, but I am like a servant among you. You men have stayed with me through many struggles. My Father has given me the power to rule. I also give you authority to rule with me. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. You will sit on thrones and judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Satan has asked to test all of you as a farmer tests his wheat. Simon, Simon, I have prayed that you will not lose your faith. Help your brothers be stronger when you come back to me. But Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you. I will even die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, before the rooster crows tonight, you will say you don't know me. You will say this three times. Then Jesus said to the apostles, When I sent you out without money or bag or sandals, did you need anything? They said, No. He said to them, But now, if you have money or a bag, carry that with you. If you don't have a sword, sell your coat and buy one. The scripture says he was treated like a criminal. This scripture must have its full meaning. It was written about me, and it is happening now. The followers said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. He said to them, That's enough. Jesus left the city and went to the Mount of Olives. His followers went with him. Jesus went there often. He said to his followers, Pray for strength against temptation. 
Then Jesus went about a stone's throw away from them. He kneeled down and prayed, Father, if it is what you want, then let me not have this cup of suffering, but do what you want, not what I want. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him to help him. Jesus was full of pain. He prayed even more. Sweat dripped from his face as if he were bleeding. When he finished praying, he went to his followers. They were asleep. Their sadness had made them very tired. Jesus said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray for strength against temptation. While Jesus was speaking, a crowd came up. One of the twelve apostles was leading them. He was Judas. He came close to Jesus so that he could kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you using the kiss to give the Son of Man to his enemies? The followers of Jesus were standing there too. They saw what was happening. They said to Jesus, Lord, should we use our swords? And one of them did use his sword. He cut off the right ear of the servant of the high priest. Jesus said, Stop! Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. Those who came to arrest Jesus were the leading priests, the soldiers who guarded the temple, and the Jewish elders. Jesus said to them, Why did you come out here with swords and sticks? Do you think I am a criminal? I was with you every day in the temple. Why didn't you try to arrest me there? But this is your time, the time when darkness rules. They arrested Jesus and took him away. They brought him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed them, but he did not go near Jesus. The soldiers started a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat together. Peter sat with them. A servant girl saw Jesus sitting there near the light. She looked closely at Peter's face and said, This man was also with him. But Peter said this was not true. He said, Girl, I don't know him. A short time later, another person saw Peter and said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. About an hour later, another man insisted, It's true, this man was with him. He is from Galilee. But Peter said, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Immediately, while Peter was still speaking, a rooster crowed. Then the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter, and Peter remembered what the Lord had said. Before the rooster crows tonight, you will say three times that you don't know me. Then Peter went outside and cried with much pain in his heart. Some men were guarding Jesus. They made fun of him like this. They covered his eyes so that he could not see them. Then they hit him and said, Prove that you are a prophet and tell us who hit you. The men said many cruel things to Jesus. When day came, the elders of the people, the leading priests and the teachers of the law came together. They led Jesus away to their high court. They said, If you are the Christ, then tell us that you are. Jesus said to them, if I tell you I am the Christ, you will not believe me. And if I ask you, you will not answer. But beginning now, the Son of Man will sit at the right hand of the powerful God. They all said, Then you are the Son of God? Jesus said to them, Yes, you are right when you say that I am. They said, Why do we need witnesses now? We ourselves heard him say this. Job 37. At the sound of his thunder, my heart pounds, as if my heart will jump out of my chest. Listen, listen to the thunder of God's voice. Listen to the rambling that comes from his mouth. He turns his lightning loose under the whole sky, and he sends it to the farthest parts of the earth. After that, you can hear the roar when he thunders with a great sound. He does not hold back the flashing when his voice is heard. God's voice thunders in wonderful ways. He does great things we cannot understand. God says to the snow, fall on the earth. And he says to the rain shower, 
be a heavy rain. With it, God stops everyone from working. That way, everyone knows it is the work of God. The animals take cover from the rain. They stay in their dens. The storm comes from where it was stored. The cold comes from the strong winds. The breath of God makes ice, and the wide waters become frozen. God fills the clouds up with water, and he scatters his lightning through them. At God's command, they swirl around over the whole earth. They do whatever he commands. God uses the clouds to punish people, or to water his earth and show his love. Job, listen to this. Stop and notice God's miracles. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang in the sky? They are the miracles of God who knows everything. You suffer in your clothes when the land is made quiet by the hot south wind. You cannot stretch out the sky like God and make it look as hard as polished bronze. Tell us what we should say to God. We cannot get our arguments ready because we do not have enough understanding. Should God be told that I want to speak? A man might try to speak to God, but he would surely be swallowed up. No one can look at the sun when it is bright in the sky after the wind has blown all the clouds away. God comes out of the north in golden light. He comes in overwhelming greatness. God all-powerful is too high for us to reach. He has great strength. He is always right and never punishes unfairly. That is why people honor God. He does not respect those who say they are wise. Two Corinthians seven. Dear friends, we have these promises from God, so we should make ourselves pure, free from anything that makes body or soul unclean. We should try to become perfect in the way we live because we respect God. Open your hearts to us. We have not done wrong to anyone. We have not ruined the faith of any person, and we have cheated no one. I do not say this to blame you. I told you before that we love you so much that we would live or die with you. I feel very sure of you. I'm very proud of you. You give me much comfort, and in all of our troubles, I have great joy. When we came into Macedonia, we had no rest. We found trouble all around us. We had fighting on the outside and fear on the inside. But God comforts those who are troubled, and God comforted us when Titus came. We were comforted by his coming, and also by the comfort that you gave him. Titus told us about your wish to see me. He told us that you are very sorry for what you did, and he told me about your great care for me. When I heard this, I was much happier. Even if the letter I wrote you made you sad, I'm not sorry I wrote it. I know it made you sad, and I was sorry for that. But it made you sad only for a short time. Now I'm happy, but not because you were made sad. I'm happy because your sorrow made you change your hearts. You became sad in the way God wanted you to. So you were not hurt by us in any way. Being sorry in the way God wants makes a person change his heart and life. This leads to salvation, and we cannot be sorry for that. But the kind of sorrow the world has will bring death. You had the kind of sorrow God wanted you to have. Now, see what this sorrow has brought you. It has made you very serious. It made you want to prove that you were not wrong. It made you angry and afraid. It made you want to see me. It made you care. It made you want the right thing to be done. You proved that you were not guilty in any part of the problem. I wrote that letter, but not because of the one who did the wrong. And it was not written because of the person who was hurt. But I wrote the letter so that you could see before God the great care that you have for us. That is why we were comforted. We were very comforted, 
and we were even happier to see that Titus was so happy. All of you made him feel much better. I bragged to Titus about you, and you showed that I was right. Everything that we said to you was true, and you have proved that what we bragged about to Titus is true. And his love for you is stronger when he remembers that you were all ready to obey. You welcomed him with respect and fear, and I am very happy that I can trust you fully.